Hello and welcome. My name is Michael Alfano. I'm the instructional technology coach for the Peekskill City School District. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use Google Calendar appointment schedules for this year's parent-teacher conferences. To navigate to Google Calendar, you can either navigate to calendar.google.com or you can click on the Google Apps icon and select Google Calendar. Once in Google Calendar, we're going to want to make sure that the newer appointment schedules feature is turned on instead of the older appointment slots feature. We can check which one is currently active by clicking on the Create menu. At the bottom of this window, we can see that the older appointment slots feature is the one shown on the account. To change this, we can click on the gear icon, then click Settings, click on Appointment Schedules on the left, and check the box that says Create Appointment Schedules instead of Appointment Slots. Once done, we can go back to our calendar and we're ready to begin. Clicking the Create button now shows the newer Appointment Schedules feature. I'm going to select this now. Here we're brought to a window where we can add all of the details of our appointment schedule on the left, and we can see all of the available appointments for booking in light blue squares on the right. First, I'm going to start with a title, which I will just put as PTC, November 30th. Our appointment duration is going to be 10 minutes. Since this is not one of the preset options, I'm going to click on Custom, change this to 10, and make sure the units are set to minutes. We now see on the right hand side, we have lots of little blue rectangles signifying all of the available appointments that can be booked. Next, we don't want to repeat this weekly, so we're going to change this to does not repeat. The date will be set to November 30th. The start time will be set to 5.30 p.m. And the end time set to 7.30 p.m. Note again on the right hand side how we're brought to the week including November 30th and we now see only appointments in the range of time from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. all of duration 10 minutes. The last thing to quickly note here is that the time zone is shown and while it should be correct it's important to just make sure so that we don't have any scheduling issues moving forward. Next, we're going to open up the scheduling window dropdown to reveal two options. The first is the maximum time in advance that an appointment can be booked. For this year, we're going to set this to 11 days. For the minimum time before the appointments start that appointments can be booked, we're going to set this to 30 hours. The next dropdown under booked appointment settings will show two more options. The first is buffer time. Turning this on will allow us to add time in between our appointments to allow for a transition. I'm going to set this to one minute, meaning that we will have one minute of free time from the end of the first meeting to the beginning of the following meeting. Every single meeting will have one minute of free time in between, allowing us to transition nicely from one to the next. The next feature is maximum bookings per day. This will allow us to limit how many booked appointments can happen in a single day. Since we want all of our slots to be available to parents, we are not going to activate this feature. Next, we have calendars checked for availability. If we expand this, we will see that our primary calendar is selected by default and nothing else is checked. This is totally fine and can be left as is. The one thing to note here is Google Calendar appointment schedules will not allow you to book an appointment if it conflicts with another event already on your calendar. What that means is if you have an event already set from 5.30 to 7.30 or anywhere in between, Google is going to think that you are busy during that time and it will remove any appointments that conflict with that time. 
Because of this, it's best to either make sure that you have no other events on your calendar on this day and time, or if you really want to have a block of time, say from 5.30 to 7.30, that says parent-teacher conferences as a reminder to yourself, you're going to want to edit the event and change it from busy to free. What this will do is it'll tell Google Calendar, even though there's an event here, I'm setting it as free and do not get rid of any other appointments on my schedule because of this other conflict. Lastly, you're gonna have an option for color where you can choose from one of a few colors. And if you use labels in Google Calendar, that can be done here as well. Clicking next will bring us to the following screen where we can see booking page, photo, and name. These are not going to be editable. This is simply showing you the profile icon and name associated with the account that will show up on your booking page. Under location and conferencing, this is where we can select how and where to meet. For this, I'm going to choose in-person meeting and I can start typing Peekskill High School and I can see that here. When I select Peekskill High School with the little pin icon, even though I just see Peekskill High School here, on the official booking page, which we'll see later, the complete address will be shown for end users. Next is an option for a description, which is a place where you can add a note on your public facing booking page. This can be any helpful information, resources, etc. You have some very basic text formatting options along with the option to include hyperlinks. I'm going to come back to this in just a moment with an example that makes sense. Next up, we have booking form. Expanding this will show three different fields, first name, last name, and email address. They all have an asterisk at the end, indicating that they are required fields. At the time of recording, we are not able to modify or change these three options or the fact that they are required. Because of that, we may think, what if somebody doesn't have an email address to put in? Since it's required, this is a really good place to leverage the description, where we can add some text such as, if you don't have an email address, please use your child's school email address. This is a nice way to ensure that we are getting the email to the right person and we are not limiting anyone from booking with the Google Calendar appointment schedule. We also have the option to add additional text fields for others to fill in at the time of booking. Clicking add an item will give us a drop down, and right now we see phone number or we see custom item. If I use phone number, I can select whether it's required or not. In this case, I will not require it, and I can click add item. We'll see that phone number is now a field here. There is no asterisk, and we have a pencil to either edit or an X to remove it. I'm going to add one more item, which is now going to be a custom item, and I am going to set this to be child's first and last name. I'm going to make this a required field and click add item. The reason I like to do this for conferences is to make sure I know exactly which student the meeting will be about, especially if parent or guardian names are not exactly the same as the child's. You do have the option to add additional custom fields if you would like by clicking add an item over and over again. The option for require email verification is one that can help to limit spam bookings, but in the case of parent-teacher conferences may cause some inequity if we have parents or guardians who cannot sign into an account due to the lack of an email address. So for the purposes of conferences, we are going to keep this deselected. Lastly, we have booking confirmations and reminders. The option that we are allowed to modify is email reminder, which right now is selected by default. What this will do is send an email notification to the email address specified at the time of booking 
at the given time below. So by default, one day before, the end user is going to get an email reminder about their appointment. We can also add an additional reminder if we see fit. In this case, I'm going to add a second one. I'm going to do a custom time, and I'm going to set this to two hours. So now, each person that books with my page is going to get one email reminder one day before, and they will get a second email reminder two hours before the conference. Within the email will be all of the details, including the time, the location, and any other information. And end users will have an option to either modify their booking or cancel it if they're no longer able to attend. Now that we're done with our booking page, we can click Save. I will now see a pop-up that shows the title of my appointment schedule. It shows the details like the 10-minute appointments, the location, including the full address, the details, and all of the text fields required. If I happen to close this window, on November 30th, I can just click it once again, and I will see this window once more. If I am looking at my calendar in day view, I will see my appointment schedule as a block of time like we see here with a grid icon at the top indicating that this is an appointment schedule, the title, and the start time. Clicking the title or the blue bar once again will reveal the booking page details. When I'm ready to share, I can click on the share icon copy my link, and I can send that where needed. In this example, I am going to open this in a new window just so we can see what our booking page looks like. We can see our icon and the name on our account, booking title, all of those additional details, including that description. And here we will see all of the different days where we can book appointments. We can click jump to the next available date to jump to November 30th and start booking. And that is it. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching.